My involvement in Manufacturing Pass stems from a, a long-standing research interest really into the development of cities uh, in a European context. First and foremost, I'm most interested in the ways in which the dual processes of industrialisation and deindustrialisation have conditioned the ways in which cities look, feel and we use them today. The Manufacturing Pass project database has been put together primarily for two reasons. One is to provide access to hard to reach and previously inaccessible sources um, and secondly to fill a gap in knowledge um, in terms of the development of the 20th century industrial and deindustrial city. I think there is a, a range and variety of different types of materials that we're trying to collect and digitise for this project. First and foremost we want to look at visual images, we want people to really engage with the ways factories and, and industrial cities looked in the 20th century. So for example with the visual materials we're collecting maps, photos, architects plans, insurance plans and also we're trying to collect textual material as well to complement this in terms of trade directory material, newspapers, company publications, business records for example. I think people can use the materials in a variety of different ways. First and foremost, they'll put, form part of teaching and learning packages, whether that's as part of an in-class seminar discussion, whether that's part of a standalone student project in which they use these types of materials to form their own questions and do their own research. For example, if I took the building behind me, which is the Peck Sock Factory, what I might then do is take a range of sources from the start of the building's history uh, in the 19th century to look at employment patterns, the organisation of the factory, where people worked, also the community side of the factory as well, whether they were part of sports teams, whether they mixed and lived and worked within the same environment. Then I'd very much take it into the 20th century to look at the rise and the fall of the factory. So this factory fell into decline in the mid to late uh, 20th century and then it became part of a landmark regeneration scheme under the City Challenge era from 1993 onwards. So you can see the conservation and regeneration of this factory. So if we take the four themes of our project, ecology of the city, um, conservation, deindustrialization, and the organization of the factory, you can see how taking one building can encapsulate all of those themes as part of a seminar-led discussion. Um, I think the intention overall is to not be too prescriptive with this. We'd like people from outside academia to also get involved in engaging with the development of the industrial city during the 20th century. So very much to go on there, use the resources to their ends, whether that's just casual interest or as part of a more formal research project. I think to summarise, the, the reasons why Manufacturing Pass is such an important project is one, on the practical level, it gives uh, a number of people open access to these sorts of previously inaccessible and hard to reach materials. And secondly, I think more than just the practical level of actually accessing sources, it allows a range of different types of people to actually engage with the very undervalued and under-acknowledged part of our past that we're still coming to terms with within British society. So giving people the opportunity to engage with the deindustrial past, the development of the city is a very important part of this project.